Hello, um, so in today's lab, we will learn that how we can manage and also edit the data uh, in ArcGIS Pro. So first, let's go ahead and also download some data. So uh, we are going to use a census website uh, to download the population data as an example. Uh, so I'm now right now in the census.gov uh, and we're going to looking for the total population data of all the states. So because I know the, the table name, so I will go ahead and just type the table names. That is B01003. Okay, so that's the total population data. Uh, so now I click that result. And as you can see, um, this number shows is the total population of the entire country. So we want the population per state. So we go to the left, uh, geography, and we choose by state. So we select state. So here you can see, do you want a specific state or do you want all states? So let's say we want all states. So we check that box and then we go back. All right, so now you can see we have the population in different state. Uh, so we are ready to download this table. So we click download. Uh, we check the table and we click download one more time. And we are going to use the 2022 data and download that uh, CSV file. All right, so now if I go to my downloads folder, um, so by default, the, uh, the data is in a zip file. So if you're using Windows, uh, you can just right click and also extract all the file and extract. Uh, so once we extract the data, so if we open that uh, folder, and now we can see we have actually three files being downloaded. And the first one is the mental data. It's about the data, about the data. So it's the data, about the data. And this one is the table notes. And the data that really contains the population is in this file. So it has dash data.csv. Uh, so let's go ahead and open this CSV file because we need to clean the data a little bit. So uh, uh, if you are using Windows, you can just double click um, and use Microsoft uh, Excel to edit this CSV file. So I'm going to go ahead and open that uh, CSV file. And as we can see here, we have some uh, uh, unnecessary columns, for example, uh, here we have those three columns that we don't need because those are just contain no values or stars. So I select those three columns and I say delete. And also we don't need uh, the second row. So because it is kind of duplicated to the first row. Uh, so I'm going to select second row and also delete. Uh, and also I will also change uh, the name of this column because uh, we know that the total population, so uh, use total population instead of using the, uh, the table number uh, will be more easier uh, for people to understand, so each month it will be easier. So now let's save uh, this file. Uh, so let's call it population, or just POP for short. So now we have cleaned uh, this population data, so this is a non-spatial data. Let's go ahead and close uh, the CSV file. So that is a POP file that clean. All right, uh, next, let's go to the census website. But uh, we're going to download uh, some spatial data. So here I'm still in the census website, but I'm on the page of the Tiger ship file. So Tiger ship file contains the spatial data, but it does not include those demographic data such as population. So which is fine because we already downloaded the population. And so now we just need to download the spatial data or the ship file, and then we can link the ship file to our population data. Uh, so let's use a 2022 data because that's where uh, the data that have population uh, downloaded, so 2022. So uh, I'm going to use the web interface. And then you can choose, okay, so what is a layer type? So we want to use the state. 
and we click submit and we can download the ship file of all the states uh, it is also an zip file so we need to extract the data once we downloaded the data okay so again I go back to my uh, downloads folder and now you can see this is the zip file that contains the spatial data or contains the ship file from the sensors so again I'm going to use uh, right click and also extract and extract uh, so now if I open this folder and I will see the multiple files like uh, SHP, PRG and DBF. So those are all the files that belong to a single ship file. All right, uh, so now we have the data ready. So we can, we also clean the data so we can start a new project and we can drag those files to our uh, ArcGIS Pro project. So start ArcGIS Pro. Uh, we're going to start with a map template. And this is our uh, lab file. Uh, we also save everything to the OneDrive folder, so go to my username and find out uh, OneDrive folder and also create uh, the project. Alright, uh, so next uh, we are going to uh, import or we are going to bring the, the data that we downloaded into our project. So. Uh, if we go to the catalog, and so in this version of ArcGIS Pro, so it's very nice that we have an option called computer. So if I click computer, and now I am able to see the all the folders. So let's go ahead, go and find out the downloads folder. So it is under my username and downloads. So here we can see that those two folders, uh, one contains the ship file, so let's expand this folder. So now you can see we have this ship file, so let's just drag this one uh, to our project. So we see the, uh, no, now we have all the states and we do the same thing. So we expand the population folder and we are going to drag the cleaned uh, CSV file. So we open that, drag that one to our project uh, because this is not a map, so it's just added to the uh, the table of contents, so nothing being added to the map. All right, uh, so let's open the attributes table of the both files. So let's open the ship file. Uh, so here we can see we have the several columns. Uh, for example, we have the GUID, so that's a unique ID of the of all the states. Um, we also have the name columns, which is contains a full name of all the states. Uh, but as you can see, we don't have population. So uh, now if we go to the uh, population.csv file and we open it. Uh, so uh, on this table, we, we also have the GUID. However, uh, if you just compare those two GUIDs, you can see actually they are uh, slightly different and on the population table we also have the name and also population so uh, if you just uh, double check the name we can see that the name are the exactly the same so which means that we can actually join the two data set based on the name okay so let's do that so because that is much easier so if you want to join based on GUID uh, you can do that that means that you need to split the field uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, so that is a little bit complicated. All right, so now we know that two uh, data set contains the same field that contain the same information that is state name. Uh, so let's go ahead, go to map, oh sorry, go to analysis. And we bring this toolbox. And the tool that we're going to use is called join actually it's called drawing field. So we are combining uh, the spatial data into that, uh, the non-spatial data into a spatial data based on a common field or the common column. So let's bring the drawing field. 
And you can see we have warning that this will modify the input table. So that's fine. So we bring the input table, which is which will be the ship file. And which field we want to join, so we want to use a name. The join table will be our population. And the column that contains the same information is called a name as well. Okay, so we are drawing based on name and the name. All right, so we can validate this drawing. Uh, so if we don't see any errors, so now we can just go ahead and, and also run this uh, drawing field tool. And when that is complete, uh, so we can now go ahead and go back to the uh, ship file. And uh, so now you can, we can see we have a few more columns that have been added. So this is a GUID from the population CSV file. We have another name field. So we have n score once because we have two name fields. Now we also have the population data. So that population data from the CSV file has now been joined or been copied to this ship, uh, ship file. All right, uh, next. We can see that in this ship file we have too many um, columns, and and also both data set is still in my downloads folder. So we want to export this ship file to our um, project database. So if you go to project uh, database, you can see it is empty because right now those files are still in the downloads folder. Uh, so let's go ahead export the data so that we can uh, save the data to our uh, project database. And also we also want to remove some other uh, columns or the other fields that we will not use. So we just want to keep the population, uh, the GUID, and also name. So we just want to keep those three uh, columns. So let's right click uh, the ship file and go to data. And we want to export the feature. Uh, so here, let's give the name. Uh, so this time, let's change the, the output name. Uh, so let's call, just call it state population. Uh, you can also define the filters. So for example, if you want to remove the state that does not contain population data, so you can do that uh, by a specify a SQ, SQL or by specify a, a, a condition. Uh, so we are not going to use filter this time. Uh, for the fields, uh, so let's check, let's uh, uncheck the other field. Let's just keep the GUID and the name. So let's remove all the others. So now I'm holding my shift key on the keyboard. So now I select the multiple fields and I just remove and I just remove this one. And also I will remove all the other uh, columns as well, all the other uh, fields as well. So I just want to keep the GUID, name, and also population. All right, and this is also uh, where we can also define the, the output coordination. So uh, let's also define a new PCS for our data set. So let's choose a PCS. Uh, since we are talking about the entire uh, United States, so this time let's choose um, this one, okay, so which I think is appropriate for this entire country. Okay, and everything we can leave as default. Okay, so now we just run this uh, tool. So uh, now we have this new file that's been exported and number one, it is saved in our geo database. And number two, if we open this uh, attribute table, uh, we can see we have the GUID, name, and our population. So we only have those three columns. Uh, we also have the ship length and our ship areas. Those are the automatically added columns. So, so we don't have, like, instead, we don't have the other uh, unnecessary columns here. Uh, so let's go ahead and remove the other uh, layer, so we don't need the base map, uh, and also we don't need the, the CSV file as well. Okay, so let's just keep um, 
uh, our uh, new data set. Okay, uh, so next uh, we are going to um, uh, do a field calculation. So we are going to add a, a one new field. So we know that we have the population. Uh, we also have the shape area, which is in the square meters. Um, because we define a new PCS, so I know that it project in meters. So this in so the area will is in square meters. So we have the population and we have the the shape area. So we want to calculate the population density. So the number of people per square kilometers. Okay. So number of population per square kilometers. Uh, so to do that, first we need to add a new field. So in this attribute table, you can see this add a new field. So let's go ahead and add a new field. Uh, we can give it a field name. So let's just call it POP uh, density and let's go population density. And for the data type, let's choose double. Uh, actually, we don't need that okay so population density and we choose double and now let's save this new field so it's on the top so save the new field all right so now if we go back to uh, our table we can see we have those null values okay because this is a new uh, new field so there's nothing that being added uh, inserted into this new field uh, so now we are going to do a calculation. So we have the population of each single state. Uh, we also have the area, which is square meters. So we want to calculate the population density, the so number of people per square kilometers. So that is this one divided by the value in this column times uh, 100,000. So to do that, let's and also we want to save the result in this new column called population density. So to do that, let's right click the population density column. And here we see we have the calculate field. Okay, so if you want to calculate, like see the length, etc., you can use this function. But we are going to calculate the field. And now you can define how do you want to calculate the result. So the result will be saved to this population density field. So we want a value in the population field, so double click, and divide by the area. And because the area was in uh, square, square meters, and we want the number of population per square kilometer. So let's also time uh, this value. Okay, actually it's uh, 1 million. And now let's click OK. All right, uh, so now we have the population density that has been calculated. So um, that is how we can add a new field and also do the field calculation. All right, uh, next. So sometimes you may also, so when you have a new data set, uh, you may also want to edit the metadata. So if you want to share the data with other people, so having a metadata will make it much easier for other people to understand your data set. So let's also edit the metadata. So um, we can do that in a catalog. And again, that's in our geodatabase. So we right click, and you can see we can edit the metadata. Uh, so there are some um, a field that are required, so for example, tags, so that will uh, help you to search and also what the summary, so what is the purpose of your data set, uh, credits, uh, etc. So feel free to type your uh, uh, information. So I'm going to pause here and also I will type some uh, information. All right, uh, so I just typed uh, some information I think might be useful. So for example, I call this one the state population density and I gave some tags, so just to help search and also give a very brief summary. And also I'd say, okay, the data is downloaded from the sensors website. 
Uh, you can also set the appropriate scale range uh, since that is at the uh, country level. So uh, we can also change that one to the country. Okay, so to country level, and let's save this one. Okay, so we can also uh, capture a, a thumbnail. So let's right click. Um, the data in the catalog, and also let's go to view the metadata. And here, let's go to the geography. Okay, and here we have a preview. So now you can see the uh, that is a shape file, and because we also define the PCS, so you can see that uh, this data is uh, projected. Okay, so uh, in the catalog. Uh, Geography and as preview, and then we have this option called create a thumbnail. So let's do that. And now next time, so if you uh, view the metadata, so you will see a thumbnail here. Okay. Uh, so this may take. Uh, uh, a few seconds to, to be updated, but now you can see we do have this thumbnail. Uh, and also you can see uh, the defined uh, tags, summary, uh, scale range, etc. Okay, uh, so let's go back to the map. So close the uh, catalog. And we also not know that from the previous lab that we do have this explore function. So when you click um, the different uh, features and you will have this pop-up window. Uh, so we can also customize this window so so that we won't show the information that uh, we really care about. So what we can do is that we can right click uh, this layer and we can so we can configure um, these pop-ups. And by default, uh, it will display all the fields. So you can just remove, we can remove this um, column and uh, we can, you can also insert actually uh, a pack text paragraph, uh, you can also insert a specific field, you can even insert image, chart, uh, etc. So let's just type uh, a text paragraph and also let's edit. Uh, so let's say just report, let's say we want to just report uh, the population density. So let's see the population density is and then we can bring the field so as the value in that field so let's see that is this one uh, we can also let's see one we'll highlight uh, the numbers so let's change the font okay and now if we click uh, so I think we need to go back so now this has been saved. Uh, so now if you click a state, uh, you can see the population density is, and also we know that is in Virginia. All right, so that is to configure or customize the pop-ups. And finally, let's create a map. So since we know that we have the population density, so let's say we want to use a map to show the, uh, the population density in different state. So let's go to feature layer. Uh, we click symbology. And for the colors, we want to use a graduated colors. Okay, so we'll talk more about creating maps later. Uh, so here, just we want to create a very simple map. Um, and also you choose which field you want to show the um, use a color to represent which field. So let's say we want to use a population density. Um, you can also choose a different ways to classify the data. So natural break is uh, the most common one. Uh, you can also, of course, choose different colors. So for example, if you like green color, uh, you can also do that. Okay, so that is to change the colors. Okay, and next, uh, let's change our map properties. So in the past, we always change uh, the properties of the data layers. So actually, we can also change the properties of the map. So first, we want to change the extent of our map. So by default, so if you click this globe icon for extent, for extent 
we can see it's the entire world. So we want to see that we want to zoom in and we want to see that we want to use the current view as our full extent because we want to focus on the United States. Uh, so first, let's say we zoom in to the appropriate extent and then we go to the map properties and we choose the extent and we use customer extent and we use the current uh, baseball extent and we click OK. And so now let's say if we zoom out and uh, we choose full extent, uh, so now we are looking at the full extent of, our, uh, of all the states. Uh, next, we also need to change the, the projection. So the map projection uh, coordinate is different from the data coordinate. So if you go to the map coordinate, we can see right now it is still using NED 1983, but we want to use the coordinate that is same as our layer. So uh, we go to our layers, and we can see our layer is using this one, which is exactly the one that we defined. So let's choose this as our uh, coordinate of this map. So now let's click OK. And now you can see the map uh, has been changed slightly because now we are using the right uh, coordination. 